You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 260 of Teach Better Talk podcast. Jeff Gargas has already messed up the beginning of his introduction, but in case you were wondering, I'm here, Ray Hewart, and so is Jeffrey Raymond Gargas. How are you, Jeff? I thought for sure you're going to be like, Jeff already messed up the intro, but it's okay because I got a new chair. <laughs> like, Ray got a new chair and she's really excited about I it. I did get so a new chair. So we're going to celebrate that for about I am. three to five more seconds. And good, that's great. Guys, hey, you know, no. you know when you get a chair that just you sit in and your butt feels good and you're able to work for a long period of time. And you just like you, wow, yeah. this is a nice chair. It's a nice chair. So if anybody needs a new chair, you can come over to my office and sit in mine and see if you <laughs> like it and order it on Wayfair. Uh this is not an ad, but maybe someday it will be. Hey Wayfair, if you're listening. Just saying. We like your product. Yeah. yeah. We could do maybe an endorsement deal or something. Anyway, um, can we talk about um, something that has nothing to do with your chair? Although, oh. although, oftentimes while you're doing stuff related to this, you may be in that chair. So it makes sense. We'll, we'll in the future, it. I will be. Um, I want to talk I about... Can also preface... Wh- what? Jeff, I also built this chair. So yeah. I had to like put pieces together. You built it? How many yeah, pieces like, was it in? Like six pieces and I had to put it together. Six? Like all the wheels. Like Ikea? I'm telling you, it was an endeavor. Did you get from no, Ikea? it was from Wayfair. Wayfair. Oh, that's what you said, Wayfair. Wow. I don't pay attention. Okay, moving on. Okay, moving on. Um, Today, while like the, the, the day that we are recording this podcast episode, a brand new course just came out over on Teach Better Academy, um, which we typically always give a shout out for, but this one gets an extra one because it's you that led the course. It was a fun course. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a fun course. And it was one that I think a lot of people were excited about because we get people that ask us about stuff like this. And it's such a big thing within uh, education. And that, that is using social media to grow your PLN. Yeah. Um, so can you give us the the rundown of what the heck's the course about? Why the heck should I take it? And where the heck do I get it? I don't know why I'm, I have to say heck every time, but that's just yeah, where I'm at today, good. right? Seemed a little aggressive, but it's okay. Let's get started with it. So guys, obviously all of our courses are at teachbetteracademy.com. This one was really enjoyable because I originally put together this specific course presentation because I was working with education consultants on how they can build their network and really build a family virtually. And a lot of educators, I think this topic is going to resonate with because we go through the bare bone basics of once you're on a platform, once you're on a social media platform, Once you made your handle and you have a login, what's next? Like, what are you actually supposed to do? Because we talk about a lot about how getting on social media can have a massive impact, not only on you as an educator, but also on other educators because you're sharing the incredible insight you have, whether it be on classroom topics or anything in between. The problem is we hear a lot of people that go through the effort to pick the platform that best suits them. And then they they log in and they give them their email And then they don't know what's next. And so what we are able to dive into in this course is really the suggestions of what comes after. How do you choose a profile picture that goes with your mission of why you even got on social media in the first place? How do you write a bio? What should you even be sharing about on social media? And what do you do when you get stuck when you don't know what to share? Or who should you be connecting with because you have goals of why you're on social media? So we get to go through all this stuff. It's not necessarily exclusive for educators, but we specifically speak through that lens because we really want each and every one of you to be a connected educator. So go check out that course over at teachbetteracademy.com. It's a good breakdown of the course. I'd like to add one thing that I noticed about the course is that it's really great. Like if you're at that starting point that you talked about, but like I want to make sure that anybody who's, if you've been on social media for a while and you've been rock and roll, like you're going to still pick something up from this course. You might have a great profile pick, but maybe... You might pick something up about the way you write your bio or the message that you do it or the, or digging into your why or maybe you have that all but the banner isn't quite what. Like, so there's a lot of pieces. Even if you've been growing your PLN for a while on social media and you feel really good about that, there's still a lot in this course that you can pull from that. Like this this hits 
it it works regardless of where you're at in that journey, I think. Well, and I should clarify, the main activity that I walk you through in this course is an activity that we did for every member of the Teach Better team two months ago. All of them Mm -hmm. are incredibly connected, but this activity really helped them frame getting what they wanted out of social media. And as I said earlier, I mean, this was a presentation we did with education consultants around North America. They were all active on social media, but this really allowed them to refocus. So I appreciate you adding that in, Jeff. Definitely important. I love it. And speaking of social media, that's actually where we met our guest. And I'm so mad at myself right now because I didn't, we got so, we got into everything with him. I forgot to ask him because I was trying to figure out and pinpoint like when we first got connected. Um, I, I feel like it's from it was through the the Twitter chat, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I Dustin, so. if you're listening, you can correct me on that. But all I know is he's been connected to us and been on our PLN for a long time. So Dustin Pearson, he's a uh, seven year veteran now, secondary special education instructor, uh, uh, taught a little bit in middle school special ed, and then now been in uh, uh, secondary for a while or into high school. I mean, uh, he teaches. He's just outside of Kansas City. He teaches American World History, Civics, Global Studies, ELA. Uh, he's in the process of getting into his his doctorate. He's completing his first novel. Uh, the guy's doing a lot, um, and he's in. And I think the thing that I love most about Dustin, he's got all this stuff going on. He coaches, but also like with all that, one of his main missions is he just wants to help you be a better teacher if he can. Whatever that means, um, whether that means connecting to event, connecting to brainstorm, being a shoulder to lean on, a a, a sounder boy, whatever it is. The the guy's constantly trying to connect and do that. And someone who really takes, I think takes advantage of his PLN and also gives to his PLN. So uh, I like this guy a whole lot. I was excited about the, the episode. I'm excited for everyone to hear. Ray, any anything or just go? Should we just Make go? Make sure you go connect and let's get started. Episode 260 with Dustin Pearson. What's up, Teach Better family? It's Jeff. How would you feel about 12 hours of free PD? That's what's happening on Saturday, April 24th. It's our next 12-hour live event. This is 12 hours of live streaming over on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. we got 12 hours of guests, 12 hours of giveaways, 12 hours of fun, 12 hours of extremely valuable PD. We have amazing educators joining us all day. People like Kim Bearden of the Ron Clark Academy, Dr. Sheldon Eakins, the amazing Hedrick Nichols, the incredible Mandy Fralick. We've got Mickey Smith Jr. We've got Kevin Butler. We got Carly Spina. We got P. Sloan Joseph. We got Brad Hughes, Jamie Fowler White, Dr. Basil Marin, Tyson Garden. The list goes on and on and on. Join us all day on Saturday, April 24th, starting at 8 a.m. over on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Huge shout out to our sponsors Classroom Q, Gim Kit, Road to Awesome, Peer Deck, Lead and Equity Center, Edgematch Publishing, Floop, and Hugh HD. We'll see you on the 24th. All right, we are here and we are chatting with Dustin Pearson. Dustin, man, it's so awesome to have you on the podcast. You've been connected to us for quite a while. I don't even remember like when that originally happened. I just know you've been around for a while in our world and uh, in our PLN here. So it's super cool to have you on the podcast now. Excited to kind of dive in, learn more about you, learn more about, about your story. But before we get too far into things, how are you feeling right now, man? You know, I am feeling, I'm feeling great. You know, it's spring, you know, they have these, as they say it. April showers bring May flowers. I'm also in coaching season. So, you know, I'm teaching during the, during the day and I'm coaching baseball in the evening um, and just really enjoying kind of that final stretch towards the end of the year, starting my doctorate this summer. So a lot of really great things are happening in my life and I'm very fortunate. So what about you, Jeff and Ray? What's going on in your life? Oh my gosh, it's been the busiest day, but what a great way to end our day is to chat with you. Uh, Dustin, I had no idea you were starting your doctor. I'm so excited to dive further into just every element of your <laughs> how you're feeling today because there's so many things I want to ask you. But before we get into all the things, all the baseball, all the doctorate, all the education stuff that I know that we're going to talk through, would you mind kind of first telling us a little bit about what you do for our listeners who may not be connected to you, kind of answering that question of, Hey, Dustin, what do you do in education? Yeah, yeah. For those that don't know, I am a high school special education teacher right outside of Kansas City, Missouri. So I'm smack dab in the Midwest. This is my seventh year teaching. Uh, My first three years, I taught middle school special education. And ever since then, I've been teaching high school special, special education. And I absolutely love what I do. Is every day easy? No. But it really brings a challenge 
And it really brings a lot of fulfillment. It's really building relationships with students, um, building relationship with colleagues, parents, and really all stakeholders. And so um, I'm also a department chair. So I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a leader as well. I coach. So I wear a lot of different hats throughout the day. But my title and what I'm very passionate about is being in the classroom and educating. I teach history. I also teach ELA as well. Um, with special education, and that's just a little what I do. So I want to dive in. So you just mentioned you've gone into doctorate. You you are you you teach. You're you're coaching. Um, you have family, and now in the doctor. Where are you at in your program? Like, are you are, are you have you started? Are you into the mix of it now? And then can you share what, what you know what you focus on in the doctorates and kind of like what made you decide that you wanted to take that next step you wanted to go for it like where is just kind of kind of give us the whole lowdown on the whole experience going into your doctor right now sure absolutely um my doctorate is going to be through st louis university so i'm on the kansas city side so all the way on the other side of the state and what it's going to be through is education leadership and being a leader and really impacting education on a large global st- global scale is something that I am very passionate about um, with relationships, career-based learning, mindfulness, project-based, inquiry-based, and just different types of learning. And so that is why I wanted to take the jump and go after my doctorate. I will actually start it this summer. Um, so I've really just gotten into it and I, I'm signing up for classes within the next week or so. So I'm just now getting started. Um, I've connected with a couple of the instructors and I'm just very looking forward to building those relationships with them, building relationships with um, my classmates coming in the future. So it's something that I am, I know it's going to be a big challenge, but I love that. I need those things in my life and my career. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where that is going to take me and who I can really impact the most. Wow. That is awesome. Congrats on that. That is a big step. Uh, I'm excited to watch your journey as you go through that. Uh, I want to go to one of my favorite questions. And this is when we talk about failure. We share a story about sometime that you've failed and that you've had to overcome and, and the lessons taken away from there. So, can you take us with you on a story, take us to a time that you've had a failure or struggle that you had to overcome, that you had to get through, and kind of share with us what happened, how did you get through it, and then what did you take away from that experience? Yeah, you know, that that's a really good question, and it's something that I tell colleagues, it's something I tell students, just because I want them to get to know me and I, as I'm trying to get to know them. You know, I'm not perfect. I've made like all of us, we've all made our mistakes, you know, throughout our career and throughout our life. And so one of the things that I share is that when I was first trying to get my teaching job, my original degree is not in special education. It is in high school uh, social science education. So my goal was to be a high school history teacher. I wanted to teach government and I wanted to teach world history. And I did that as a student teacher and I did awesome with it. Um, But going through the process, I had 13 interviews and none of them offered me a full time position. And I'm one of those when I go into something, I give it I really put everything into it. And so it was it was very demoralizing. And I really questioned myself, you know, is this for me? Am I going down the right path? What am I doing wrong? Why don't they like me? And so it was a real inner battle to find out if I'm meant for this. And so I took a job as a paraprofessional my first year and I really fell in love with special education and I was really, and I was good at it. I was able to co-teach, have my own classroom. And so I tell people that I didn't find special education, special education found me. And so I was able to get that first position. I've taken it and I run with it. And I've really grown not only as an educator, but as a person as well in just so many different ways. And so those 13 denies that I got really turned, really catapulted me to a different direction. And it's something that I'm incredibly grateful for. So even for those teachers or future teachers out there that are listening to this, keep pushing, you know, you are meant for this. Everything is a learning experience and it's up to us on how we want to take that. and 
go back, go, go at it the next time. So keep pushing. You have a support system behind you and you can totally do this and your opportunity will come. Dustin, I love that. I mean, 13, 13 knows. I mean, that that's enough to drive a lot of people away and they would think, oh, this isn't right for me. But to, to look at those and to, to continue on and to look at those as, as signs or, or signals of and help like sort of guide you to where you eventually found and that, and or, or that it found you and the way you say that, like that is such an important lesson to know. And I, I hope everyone was listening when you were saying that like your moment will come, your time will come. It might be 13 and it might be 22 in, but it's learned from every single one of those. And I love that lesson pulled from that. That is just powerful, my friend. Um, and so now, now I want to flip it and, what, 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 what's a failure you've had and how did you, how are you able to um, learn from that? Oh, man, there's so many of them, but <laughs> my thing is when, when I think about the failures that I have, I, I like looking back at, you know, I still pull from them now, right? So my biggest thing is like a lot of times they feel they hurt and when they happen, they can be painful. But if you carry them with you and, you and you remember them as a learning opportunity, you can pull from them at all times, right? So I've had a lot of failures where I, you know, let my emotions carry me versus my best, my, you know, the right intention. Um, biggest fail I talk about a lot is when my record label went under, which is a too, way too long of a story for me to, to include it here because this is about you. But for me, it's, it's one of the biggest lessons I've ever learned from failure is that like what you do, your title, your role, your quote unquote success level is not who you are, right? It's more important about who you are and what kind of person you are and finding your happiness. And, and so I, I think, you know, when, when we have these failures, regardless of whether they're big, small, feel painful or, or super painful at the time, it's trying to find whatever we can understanding that, Hey, like your time is coming. We're going to get there. Um, if you can learn a little bit from each spot and each little failure, each little struggle, each little painful moment, that's how you one build yourself ready to be able to take on the next big thing. But also that's how you build up this bank of knowledge that allows you to be better at what you do in the future. So that's how I always try and focus on those things. But what I'd love to do now, if I, if I can, Dustin, I'd love to have you, can we flip it? Let's talk about a successful time that you've had and, and sort of the same thing to like share a story with us, take us there with you. Like what happened? Why was it a success for you? And then also what'd you take away from that experience kind of on that other end? You know, it, it really depends how you look at it. You know, I can pull out successes, you know, in the smallest things, whether it's having a difficult conversation with a parent or, you know, a difficult conversation with a student and have that be successful. I can also point to a lesson that I've had that's been tremendously successful. So I know my favorite lessons are the ones where I'm able to get my get the students up moving around interacting and be able to answer that question why why is this important and that so i'm i'm looking at that on a smaller scale and from a larger scale it's really you know the trust that i've been able to develop and relationships i've been able to develop with colleagues with administration with parents and just you know have them trust me with you know, whatever that may be, whether it's taking on a leadership position, whether it is leading a certain project, whether whether it is others being vulnerable with me. You know, I'm, you know, I I should have stated at the beginning, I'm also writing a book as well on co-teaching. And so, you know, having other teachers from around the world really open up and tell me, you know, their experiences with co-teaching and just there's a number of different ways that I look at it. Like I said, I love looking at those lessons and watching those students really open up and have fun with learning. And those times where I'm able to grow as a leader and expand and advocate. And so those are just a few things I can really point to and, you know, really be proud of. And I know, you know, more is going to be coming and it's just, it's really up to us to put ourselves in those situations and take advantage when those successes arrive. You know, Dustin, you've shared already in this podcast how much you're involved in, not just how much you're involved in in terms of how busy you are, but really your passions for all these really wonderful specific areas in education. So when it comes to what's fueling your fire, I mean, every single person has some concept, some dream, some aspiration, some goal that really is fueling, you know, keeping them going through these hard times. 
I'd love to learn more about what's keeping you excited right now about education and everything that you're involved in. You know, you know, it just depends on it. It depends on the day of the week. You know, one day there's something new. The next day there's something new, you know, coming out as well. For me, I am one of those. I need to be pushed. I need to be challenged. I want to be coached and I want to have feedback. And so I'm constantly trying to get better. I am investing in new projects, new ideas, new teaching strategies. And I'm doing it as a team effort. I'm doing it with my colleagues. I'm doing it with my students. I'm doing it with my administrators. And we're doing it right here on, with this conversation. So it's really that need to be pushed and the need to be challenged and to really test what you can do and take it as a learning experience. Um, one of the things that I always tell my students, and for those that don't know, I'm an avid hiker. I go to as many national parks as I can and just hike. And I always tell my students to find your view. And what that means is that whenever I go hiking, I try to find the best possible spot and I take pictures. Well, then I try to find another spot that's even better and I take pictures of that. So I'm always constantly trying to find the next best thing. And so really that drive to continuously do better is what really pushes me. Oh, I love that. And that, you know, that's a such a blessing that we can work in a field that Every day, there's something new that brings us joy. Every day, there's something new that we can be pursuing and celebrating. And I love your mindset with everything that you're working on. You know, when it comes to um, Teach Better Talk podcast, we're all about dishing out our favorite pieces of advice. And so if you had to pick one piece of advice that you might give to teachers, essentially to, you know, educators listening to this episode, a really, really big piece you want them to consider what would be the one piece of advice you would suggest? For me, it's relationships. This is a relationships business. Um, Build relationships with your students. Build relationships with parents. Build relationships with your colleagues, your administration, your stakeholders. When you build relationships, it makes the wheel turn. It makes all things possible. You know, say, for example, you build relationships with parents you know, say you have a student that's having a difficult day and you have to have that conversation with a parent, you build that relationship with them, that conversation that is intended to be a difficult one is much easier. Um, with your colleagues, you know, when you have those relationships, you can bounce ideas off of each other. You have that respect and that trust that's built between with your students. Not only are you getting to know them as learners, but you're going to know them as people. You know, our students are people. They're not data points. We need to get to know them. And we need to expose them to as much different types of learning as we possibly can. And so get to know them. Find out how they like to learn. Find out what they're interested in. What activities are they involved with? Because when you show that you're authentically interested in them, you have them. You have them for life. And they're, they're going to be there and they're going to follow you you know, till the end of the road. And so that's what I can really say is relationships. Oh, I love that Dustin's and so, so true. So, so important. Um, not, it, it, I love how you said that they're not just data points, right? They're, they're people and they are, they're people. They have things that they like, things that are so unique and, and special about them. And, and when you talk about being authentically, um, connected and authentically interested i think that's that's the key is they've got to feel that authenticity so they know that you actually really do care you're not just saying that because people because dustin said i'm supposed to say nice things right and i'm supposed to be connected but because i actually care i actually want to know and they're going to feel that because you know when someone really cares about you and i i think that's such a such a huge piece of advice such an important piece of advice so i love it man um let's let's keep this rolling i'm loving how this is going He's killing it, Ray. So I'm going to see if we can keep doing it here on these next six questions. Dustin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw these next six at you. Your goals answer each one in 15 seconds or less. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. Throw it at me. <laughs> All right, my man. Uh, question one is, what is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? Oh, number one, Google Classroom. Uh, give us a book you're reading right now. Book I am reading. Um... Out with the Old Breed. It is the memoirs of Eugene Sledge, who fought in the Pacific in World War II and also um, was the screenplay for the HBO show The Pacific. 
um, very detailed, very graphic memoirs on his time fighting at Peleliu and Okinawa. Who do we need to follow on Twitter or Instagram today? Oh, my gosh. Where to begin? Um, For me, Amy Fast, Fast Crown, is someone who really inspires me from a leadership and just mindset. Brad Johnson is another one who is a great follow as well. And, of course, you know, the Teach Better team with just the material, the authentic nature. It's just there's, there's really a lot to follow and learn from. Uh, what's a good YouTube channel, website, or podcast for educators to check out? You know, if you are if you are teaching, say for example, World War One, the Great War Channel is simply phenomenal. They follow World War One in real time um, from when it started in 1914 to 1918, and they follow it as if it actually happened. There's 700 something videos. Um, they're still continuing to this day. It's you know, for a history nerd like me, there it's tremendous. Um, I also do a lot of the soft mindfulness music when I go through daily meditation in the morning just to kind of help center myself. And I also play that in the classroom to help my students self-regulate and really find that calmness within them. Uh, give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Leave work at work. When you leave the building, that is your time to be you. You know, work will be there the next day, I promise you, but you need to have time for you. If you don't, it doesn't matter how passionate you are, you will burn out. So leave work at work, find time to invest something you are passionate about or a hobby and just be you. I promise you, you will feel 10,000 times better. You'll be a better teacher and a better person. And lastly, give us the best piece of advice you've ever received. The best piece of advice I have ever received is to number one, be you, be authentic. Um, Everyone can spot a phony from a mile away. I have to be me. And, you know, I'm a pretty likable dude. So I have that going for me. But you know, just be you. And those of you and those that want to be in your in your circle will gravitate towards you. I love that piece of advice. That is absolutely something we all need to live by. And Dustin, you have been able to share so much in this podcast. Although I do have a concern. I just want to confirm you don't think I'm a phony, but you think Jeff is a phony. Can you just right? like that's that's good. You agree? You you must be reading my minds. Yes. <laughs> well, aside from Jeff being a phony, Dustin, I do want to make sure that our listeners understand that you are absolutely not one and they need to connect with you further. Would you mind sharing your Twitter handle and any other way that they can get connected to you? Yeah, yeah. My Twitter handle is Dustin, D-U-S-T-I-N, Pearson, P-E-A-R-S-O-N, and then the number two. Um, I use the hashtag we are one team, no spaces, just because of the fact that all of us together as one, we're all one team. And, you know, even though, Ray, you're in Illinois, Jeff, you're in Ohio, and I'm in Missouri, we're all connected, you know, what, you know, with this conversation online, we're all teachers, and we're all doing this together. I also run a website, which I haven't written as well recently, just because of um, school and whatnot. We are one team education dot wordpress dot com. I'm also running a text um, building effective co teaching strategies that I'm probably about 90 percent of the way done. So I'm looking forward to publishing that. So there's a lot of ways to get a hold of me. I am always available. I want to help you continue to be a great teacher. I want I want to help you thrive. And so we're all here together and let's connect and let's let's get after and have fun. I love it. And you know, you can find all the uh, links and resources, everything we talked about in this episode over at teachbetter.com as well as the really important, really important links for connecting with Dustin and keeping this conversation going and leaning on each other and growing with each other. Uh, so head over to teachbetter.com for all of that. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming, upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and review, we'd really appreciate that as well. And let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and just share this podcast with them. Dustin, man, this is awesome. Um, 
so excited for you and the, the new journey into the doctorate and everything that you've got going on. So glad that we were able to have you on and, and hopefully other people will, will take you up on the offer and connect with you because we are one team and we are in this together. Um, and it's just super awesome to have you on the podcast. Really appreciate you taking some time, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Ray and Jeff, it's been, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for your time and look forward to connecting in the future. And until next time, let's go out there and let's teach better. <laughs>